Isn't it a bit gay we're doing the same uh, race thing? I'm yeah, this. you know what? This. Uh, it, it shows that we're confident in our sexuality. Okay, that's cool. Hey, what's welcome up? to fucking chess video. New shit. Uh, my name is Matisse and this is uh, Rune. Today we're gonna be analyzing a uh, game played very recently in the World Cup. It's Kramnik vs. Sandrik. It's a very, very beautiful game where Kramnik really shows his class, really shows why he became world champion. He really crushes Sandrik in the crucial uh, game. He draws the rest of the game to win uh, the World Cup and a metric fuck ton of money, $96,000 is actually what this game is worth. So that's uh, pretty impressive. We have this thing called fucking chess. It's a Danish group where uh, our mission is to make chess more appealing, less nerdy, more sex sexy, sexier, yeah. definitely, yeah. Uh, more fresh. Yeah. Um, so we are in no way experts, yeah. but uh, we do have love for the game. You know, and there's actually a really interesting anecdote that describes uh, how our analysis couldn't possibly do justice to, uh, to this game. The, uh, the anecdote runs like this. Uh, back in the day, uh, Karpov and Kasparov placed, played these marathon matches for the uh, World Championship, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, they really hated each other, both politically and on the chessboard. They were like fire and ice, and they slandered each other in the press often. And at this, some point, uh, this uh, interviewer is asking Kasparov, saying, Mr. Kasparov, uh, you're always seen after your games with Anatoly Karpov really enjoying yourself and I already had too much to drink. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, you were really enjoying yourself and you're enjoying each other's company while you're discussing the game. Uh, but oh, you hate each other so much. How can this be? And Kasparov looks the interviewer straight in the eye and says, you know, you have to understand that Karpov is the only person in the whole world that actually knows what I'm talking about. So and that's that's true somehow, and that's true somewhat. So we we have to. Uh... And we probably though know less about chess than the reporter, and less than all the nerds online who did these analyses. But we still feel like we can add something to the table. Yeah, we can bring some sexiness to the table, and maybe some rum and yeah. some cigarettes, and uh, see where it takes us. Yeah, I have a really nice cigar as well, so I think we should uh, get to it. Let's get our game on. Yeah. All right, man. That's okay. We. <laughs> We do a cheers and a high five. We just switch classes. We're that good friends. Mm. Ah. All right. All right. So here we go again. Here we go, yo. I'll be uh, representing Vladimir Kramnik, who should be very well known to you. He is uh, the only human to have ever beaten Kasparov in a match. Uh, he took uh, the World Championship title from the legendary Kasparov uh, in uh, the year 2000. And I will be Dmitry! Dmitry and Dreykin, yes, okay. Yes. Who, uh, they are both Russian, of course, and of course, uh, Kramnik is uh, by far the older player at uh, 38. They do represent two different generations, thus tendencies in chess. Like, mm -hmm. I like representing this guy, because He's part of this sort of new breed, of course, with along with... How old is Dimitri? Dimitri is 23 years old. Yeah, and Magnus Carlsen, of course, is 22. Both beautiful players. Yeah. I mean, Magnus, we all love him. Maybe the best chess player ever, slash model. And we have all these new young upcomers, like... Who we got there? Like, like Karyakin, for instance, one of my favorite young players, uh, the youngest grandmaster ever. He's like 22 years old. He's uh, number six in the world at this point. He's so very, he's so good. He's so talented. Mm. We have a lot of these guys, Fabiano, Caruana. Um, oh, and then there's the Indian chick, the girl who won the Indian championship. Tachev. Yeah. Tachev. She's so hot. It's, like, it's amazing. You should, you should simply uh, watch the Tata Steel uh, interview with uh, Tachev, Grandmaster Tachev, and just notice that she never really closes her mouth at any time. She's so hot. I, I was, she's I was, such I, a strong player as well. I was going to India to make a documentary about her, but the immigration wouldn't give me a, a visa. Yeah, but they have enough people in India, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I'm young, I'm Russian. Uh, won the Russian championship, by the way, yeah. which is the uh, 65th uh, Russian championship, which is a tremendous achievement for us. My point is, I'm not impressed. Bring it. 
So, uh, Kramer goes into the game with pawn to d4, which is a very typical move of him, it's one of his preferred moves. It's, uh, it signals sort of a slow, positional maneuvering game, it's not always the case, but that is sort of uh, the most common way to play these d4 openings. So, and then I can uh, play uh, e6, and uh, when my uh, uh, analytical assistant is ready, I think uh, that he will do that. Yeah, and... Um it's uh, e6. Yeah, in my could, book, a bit defensive move. Yeah, we could go into something like the French defense, but Kramnik opts for the uh, Queen's Gambit uh, setup, and that's actually what we're going to see. The knight to uh, f6. Yeah, that uh, he, it, it makes it possible for if, uh, if Kramnik plays uh, knight to c3, there will be an Imso Indian possible, but uh, he avoids this with the knight to f3. And uh, then we enter sort of a Queen's Gambit decline with uh, d5. So. Yeah, and then we pin the knight. Kramnik simply pins the knight. It's very uh, book line stuff. It's, it's one of the main lines. Been played like a denies thousand. the pin. Of course, denies the pin. Uh, I'll just uh, develop uh, another knight uh, from uh, Kramnik's point of view. So. And I'll be get the fuck out of here. Yeah, this uh, serves two purposes. Of course, we all uh, the page, uh, the bishop has to decide which diagonal it will be. I mean, it could also go to one of these diagonals, but it it will go here. And also now this pawn is no longer on h7, and a very typical setup in the queen's game that uh, the client um, positions is we'll have a queen on uh, c2 and a bishop on uh, uh, d3 will be like a battery attacking this pawn. I'm when not the pawn scared. No, no. And then Draken wasn't. And Draken wasn't either. So, um, but I got back with the pawn and. Uh, there's a simple castling move, it's, it's, it's all very standard, and then uh, we have bc e3 from uh, Kramnik's point of view. So at this point, Dimitri and Darkin has to uh, make a uh, stylistic decision about what uh, uh, what area he wants this game to go in. And he can't, uh, he, has to be uh, he has to be very careful because uh, Kramnik is uh, well known for having a lot of preparation and he understands these positions very well. He plays a somewhat offbeat move with a b6. I wouldn't call it offbeat. I love the Fianchetto and obviously you have the center control of the dark squares with your pawns. So yeah. eventually developing this, sort of getting ready to own this diagonal. Yeah, but it is my understanding that uh, at Grandmaster level uh, b6 in this position is not uh, terribly uh, popular. Um, making it a somewhat offbeat opening at the highest level. That is my understanding at least. So at this point, uh, Kramnik simply developed the bishop to uh, d3. Alright. And here we are in a position that traditionally in the Queen's Gambit, you offer this gambit, this, this pawn, which is at some point in the beginning sort of a free pawn, but then you open up here and you're able to recapture lots of variations. But at this point, I choose to Simply take it now. Yeah, and, and I force Kramnik to take back with the bishop right here, so thus winning a bit of momentum because yeah. forcing him to move his bishop twice yeah. back to back. Yeah, sort of losing a tempo there. You got a little cigar on your lip there. I do. Yeah, well, that's that's a it's stylish, it's, it's a stylish, stylistic decision. Uh, yeah, we sorry, our stylist is off tonight, but yeah, we make it work. Yeah, we'll make it work. Yeah, yeah sure. so beautiful. So uh, at this point, it should be uh, time to um, to make play another move for Andragon, and he'll go for the Fianchetto. Fianchetto of the bishop, I think. So uh, that's 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 the opening. We're approaching uh, the end of the opening. Uh, Kramnik will of course castle in this position. No, of course, there's, there are other moves. This is very uh, very solid move, and we are. Uh, almost uh, ready to connect the rooks. Kramnik will simply need to play the uh, queen to e2 and then the uh, rooks will be connected and he will be done with the, his development. He has developed in a very very uh, comfortable way and uh, putting a bit of pressure on, on black but black is also very comfortable. I'm point. still just gonna keep subtle development. Yeah. You know the knight loves to be on the b6 but in this case I want to keep my Fianchetto, Fianchetto diagonal open. Yeah, so I'll do simply, this. Yeah. Sort of defensive, yeah. also. Your move, son of a bitch. So at this point, uh, simply place, uh, Vladimir Kramnik simply plays the queen to e2, a very natural square. Also uh, building a battery of the queen and the bishop. Sort of attacking this, uh, the queen side of uh, the board. 
And I will do Dimitri. Yeah. Will do. I will not call this me because I find this a bit strange. Uh, but the A6. Yeah, sort of waiting. Push. Push. Yeah, taking away some squares. Just seeing, waiting, seeing what uh, what White is going to do. White will develop the rook to uh, D1. Simply uh, putting pressure on the center and uh, the very uh, important uh, D5 square. We'll see that later. So. Um, okay. And now I will commence a series of moves with the objective to trying to trade off these bishops. Why do I want to trade these off? This is a very active piece for uh, uh, for whites, and it will lessen the burden of defense for uh, uh, for, for black simply. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Kramnik is uh, more interested in keeping the bishops on, and if he wants to, if if they should go, it should go with some sort of advantage to him. Uh, and uh, just trading the bishops now will only give a smidgen of advantage. And I insist. Yeah. So you will uh, simply, of course, uh, take the knight. Uh, Kramnik will recapture. A bit strange allowing Kramnik to centralize one of the, the B pawn yeah. towards the center. Yeah. This so is a nice setup. Yeah, it is. It's, it a, is. it's a gift wrap. Yeah. But uh, still, uh, there is a very uh, simple motif, that is that he wants to uh, exchange uh, this bishop for this bishop, and he will Here pursue comes. that. He insists. Yeah, and now, uh, with that series of moves, uh, the only way uh, that Kramnik can avoid this now is playing uh, with uh, bishop to uh, h4, in effect... Uh, Repetition. Yeah, repeating the position, because of course... The, uh, the bishop can go back and it will be sort of a great master draw very early in the game. And uh, Kramnik is not interested in that, he'll instead say, okay, you push, uh, you uh, move the piece uh, around more than once, so I'll just push uh, in the center. Boom, gone. Yeah, and then we'll have the exchange. And of course, there is a double pawn here. Yeah? On the king side, kind yeah. of expose, exposing the h The file. majesty, yeah. yeah? But uh, is it an exploitable, exploitable weakness? Uh, Not yet. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think that uh, perhaps against me it would be possible to exploit the slightly weakened position of the king, but there is no real attack coming anytime soon, and against the player of Kranich's caliber I think this is uh, absolutely no problem with the double pawns over here. So. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go cheers and say uh, to uh, Andrekin, it's a very beautiful no, name. No, so no, 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 no. No zdrowia. No zdrowia, And now I will commence, and not an attack, but try to have a positional advantage. On the queen side. On the queen side of the board. Yeah. And showing what did, uh, the strange a move was all about. So it. Uh, just sure. attacking the bishop, the bishop will of course drop back and mm -hmm. uh, assume the normal position on d3. Alright, and I will bring my knight into the game. Yeah, and you should uh, pay close attention to that knight because it becomes quite adventurous and, and uh, un unorthodox. Uh, it has like an unorthodox uh, play that is really seems pushing like white back. All, weirdly enough, already sees this route because he has some preventive. Yeah, he, he plays uh, what I consider to be a strange move, simply queen to e3, uh, but it uh, it's a very strong move, it's very accurate, and we'll see in uh, just a few moves why he, why he is that he does that, one, one of the reasons. This is a sexy move. Yeah. He puts the knight on the rim, which is against the rules. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, the knight on the rim is the that's what we're saying. It's playing up a it's playing up a as we say in Danish. Yeah. Meaning something... Uh, a rule of thumb, at yeah. least, right? Yeah. yeah. And your kid brother, who plays chess as well, and yeah. we all love the guy. The Sun King. The Sun King. Yeah. Uh, has this thing that if it's a convention that something is bad, yeah. he loves it. Yeah. So, like, he will claim that the new Star Wars are better than the old ones. Yeah, and Just he'll claim also <clears throat> that the Night on the Rim is, like, the best Fucking thing. Fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's the best thing ever. Yeah. So it's the adventurous Sun King Knight ramble that has commenced. Yeah, correct. And uh, Kramnik simply drops the uh, bishop back, attacks the knight, and also uh, exposes the defense from the queen to the uh, pawn on c3. So the slight, yeah, he weird simply, queen move yeah. before yeah. makes sense. It totally makes sense. It's, it simply says, yeah, you'll just do whatever you want. I'll just maneuver my pieces slightly, and I'll have a, have an excellent position. You'll be as adventurous as you want. And, uh, but the Sun King, your brother, uses this as, you know, um, uh, like an element of surprise. Yeah. I don't think... Kramnik's not impressed. <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't think he was uh, impressed or even... Uh, or even uh, but the adventure continues. 
moves. Yeah, he does. And that, attacking the Rogue Beat you. Yeah. A one piece attack. Yeah. The and only black piece on your half. Yeah. And uh, yeah, of course. So it's a it's a very uh, very simple uh, attack. But of course, the uh, uh, the knight attacked the rook, which was on the one. But the uh, idea was, of course, just to win a tempo to uh, get the knight. To I got more tempo in this knight. Yeah, queen. What? So now yeah. So now now the knight is on c4, which was the square uh, that uh, we. Uh, that black got control of, which started as early as uh, as the strange move uh, a6. So now we see uh, the idea and all its glory. This is a pretty sexy position. It is a pretty sexy position. Also, the uh, the rook has moved twice now uh, because uh, Karnik would want it to be on d1, but and Dragon forced it to be on to be on b2. So that's a pretty sexy play. Uh, and uh, Karnik drops his queen all the way back, and. I would be really pleased with myself if I were black in this position. Exactly. I really would. I really would. He has forced all the forces to the queen side, yeah. yet not really exposed something. Yeah. Like what would these forces do? Yeah. How would you breach this, like harmonious um, pawn structure? Yeah. And he managed to, I mean, yeah, his rook moved twice. This piece has moved. It looks like a very beautiful, <laughs> twi a beautiful knight. It has moved from. Uh, from b8 to d7 to b6 to a4 to b2 and now it's on c4 a very beautiful play so it's yeah. it's been quite adventurous but as we shall see uh Kranich has to move a4 and at uh, the right moment this will uh, make all of this uh seem a bit less strong so we are looking forward to that Of course, in this position, uh, Kramnik has some very nice uh, center control, he has some very nicely coordinated pieces and a very safe king, so he's very comfortable in this position. At this point, the somewhat timid opening play of uh, Dmitry Andrekin has to uh, come to a close and he has to fight for some initiative or fight for the uh, central control otherwise. I mean, he has to take advantage of the fact that he's that young, so, I mean, he's not reckless, but he can't just roll over and die. No, no. When he, you have this positional, this positional master in front of you. Right? Yeah. Alright, All right. cool. Attack in the center. Of course, he plays c5. Trying to grab so some much. initiative. Yeah. And uh, that makes so much sense, a counter-attacking in the center. When you are attacking the center, remember this, kids. Uh, you are you're being attacked in the center. You can't attack in the flank and vice versa. So immediately, Kramer plays uh, a four. Yeah, and kids, remember this. Don't give a fuck. Yeah. So the pawns in uh, in the. Uh, Center I exchange and the Kremlin establishes is a very nice pawn duo by uh, But so okay, I just said don't give a fuck, claim initiative or yeah. whatever. But he just gave Kramnik two powerful center pawns. For what? Yeah, for one very, very simple thing actually. A very nice C file indeed. And so open file. This yeah. is Nimsovic style. Yeah. Boom. I get it. Rook to C eight. That's uh owning the file. Yeah. Not to say the least, yeah. pointing indirectly at the queen. Yeah, that's an X-ray attack on the queen. Oh no, I'm a chess player. I don't do that style, kind of stuff. No thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let's talk later. Uh, all right. So um, the the queen is uh, indirectly attacked, uh, but uh, we have this issue out here, so that we are going to resolve immediately. Kramnik captures the pawn and gets what it is he wants. He wants a very th simple thing. He wants a target, and what we have right here is a target. So he can now slowly improve his position and maneuver around and attacking this pawn. So uh, immediately he has though to uh, take care of this X-ray attack on his queen. He'll move the queen to uh, e1. And but but time out. Yeah. Move it back. Yeah, I'll move this it back is again. where that Kramnik is way smarter than all the people who analyzes this, and way smarter than you and. Obviously, thus way smarter than me. Is this not a free pawn? He can just capture straight away with the rook. That looks like a free pawn. So that's an open question to our viewers. Exactly why wouldn't you take the pawn on uh, b5? If you remember the uh, anecdote with uh, Kasparov and Kramnik, uh, that's uh, sort of uh, sort of uh, the reason that uh, we are not completely. And in, uh, also, we decided not to get into too many variations. We're yeah. trying to keep it simple. Yeah, we're trying to keep it simple. Yeah. And, yeah. So uh, anyway, 
He does a defensive maneuver, yeah. so to say, as we talked about before. Yeah. He gets his queen out of indirect fire. Yeah. Let's agree, it's not under fire. It's not under Maybe fire. that's what we're missing. Yeah, we're missing some. We're got, we are probably missing some tactic with the, the knight somehow attacking some stuff, uh, exposing the queen. Yeah. So the queen goes to e1, cool. and but that gives dear um, Dimitri the chance to defend the open target. Yeah, and. Uh, <clears throat> the pileup has started, the rook goes to b4, attacking the knight, uh, stopping the pawn in the tracks, and uh, generally just improving the position of the rook. But here's an open file, yeah. and here's another open file. Indeed. I claim this in the name of Nemsovich. Yeah. What you going to do? Yeah, Kramnik uh, could exchange this, but this uh, that would only mean that the... Uh, Black Queen would uh, land on a8 and uh, have this file, so instead he'll improve the position of his rook. Notice uh, that this is the first time this rook uh, moves and it goes to d1 to uh, make it possible to push uh, the pawn on d4 to d5, which will be... Uh, There's been a shift of forces. Yes, because indeed. Before we were happy about Black's position, because all the white forces were here pointing yeah. at a somewhat solid pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Now they're centered. Something is happening. Yeah, that is what Kremlin does. He maneuvers, he creates a target, then he controls the center, then he uh, attacks the target, then he controls it. He plays all over the board. Uh, in, uh, but now he gave me the open file. What yeah. can you do with a completely open file? You can go to the seventh, in this case, the second rank, yeah. which is a good place to be. And, and it seems logic, logical, sorry. Um, but he chooses the third. Yeah. Amongst others, maybe because then he's out of the way of the white. Yeah, very picture. nasty, very nasty. Uh, um, mm. yeah, this, this looks. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we went into that, that yeah. would probably be nasty. Yeah. But there's a new um, lot of squares that are now controlled. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good. But at this point, we have the star move of the game. And uh, Kramnik will have had to see a very interesting motif that actually wins the game from here. And it has to do with the queen, even though it does not uh, immediately uh, look like it. It has to do with the relative relative value of the queen. So he pushes the pawn to d5. And uh, there is uh, a seemingly watertight defense to this expansion in the center. Uh, but... Uh, Shit's about to hit the fan. Shit's about to hit the fan. So Kramnik plays this very beautiful d5 move. Uh, and it really forces the issue and he has had to see like a lot of complications and a really, really nice winning idea. Yeah. So of course we first have uh, resolve, uh, Andre can have to resolve the tension uh, immediately here. So he mm -hmm. of course uh, catches the ball. This is a logical move. Yeah, it, right? it really is. And uh, the... Uh, the pawn is recaptured and... And nothing here seems to be like way out of line. No, no, no. But uh, Andrejkin plays a very, very, uh, should we say, uh, logical and, uh, and easy to spot move, which is a... Uh, Threaten the queen, get out of my open file. Yeah. And this is where Kramnik's brilliance really shows, because I really, uh, I really could, could use some, uh, some stuff to drink. But Kramnik says, yeah, the queen! I don't really need the queen. I can make a new queen. I can simply go here and capture this pawn, this bishop over here. Oh, excuse me, we're just uh, so Kramnik. Uh, what? Kramnik uh, captures the uh, the bishop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. On, on c6, allowing his queen to be taken with check. So that's of course what I'm taking place immediately. And I've, I suppose that he's been... Um, yeah, this is pretty. Yeah, it's... It, he's so good, this guy. It's, it's, it has to do with like all the pieces on the board. For instance, notice that the bishop on c2 is attacking the square on h7. It's a, a trivial, almost... Uh, uh, it's, it's, you wouldn't even notice. But it's, it has everything to do with the winning idea here. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the queen is captured. He has to do that. And the queen is captured with check. With check, with tempo, some would say. With yeah. initiative. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Oh, and and uh, notice that uh, the knight recaptures. So, so the, uh, have the threat going yeah. on. Yeah. So the rook, this is crucial that the rook 
still attacks the queen. The queen has to go, and now Kramnik has the passed pawn. He has been pressuring this pawn on b5 all this time, so he was able to create enough force to press this pawn through, and it is enough to win. It's so brilliant. Okay, so Tama, we yeah. have a good position here. Yeah. We're approaching the end game, we're not in the end game, but of course the pawns become more and more valuable. We have a pretty potent uh, past pawn. Oh, yeah, I would say that's more than He just potent. sacrificed his and queen. Entire queen. Material. Let's do the status. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so we have uh, two rooks, roughly goes out with the queen. Then we have a, a knight uh, on uh, both sides, and then we have a rook for a uh, for a uh, bishop. Then we have three pawns versus three pawns and one pawn versus one pawn. So that would technically be a material advantage, quite significant material advantage for black. But this pawn is strong and Kramnik knew this. And I know this now because I've seen the game and this pawn is weak. Had I not seen the game I would say these pawns were perhaps that this pawn was slightly stronger than this. Sixth rank, I mean, yeah. But Kramnik makes it look so easy. It makes it look like it's just like it's also just for me because I'm a rookie in this yeah. game. I really am. So like when I was learning this game, one of the rules I made for myself is every time you make a move, make sure your queen is not up for grabs. Yeah. So like this, the share idea of just sacrificing queen. queen. Yeah. For positional advantage. For, yeah. <laughs> not even positional. Also positional. But for a past fucking pawn. Yeah. So beautiful. So beautiful. He has to do something. He'll play uh, something like uh, queen c7 because uh, there's yeah, two things. Like he, uh, well, at least he realizes. Of course he does. Of course he does. But he, he's getting anxious now. Yeah. Because he, he cannot... There's a lot of places he can go with this queen. Because yeah. there's a... The back rank. That's a back rank checkmate we have right here with the rook. Because there's no escape square because of this brilliantly placed bishop on c2. But this makes it possible for Kramnik just to simply capture the pawn that I would have thought was very strong. He just captures capture it. The uh, queen cannot take the pawn on c6 because that's just checkmate. Right away. So he has to try to keep pressure over here by eliminating the threat yeah. of an immediate back rank. He plays eight. Yeah, he plays g6. Now he's able to take the pawn, but that gives Kremlin the crucial tempo to simply play rook to c5, attacking the knight, and more importantly, much more importantly, defending the crucial passed pawn on c6. Now, that's why Kremnik was once world champion. That's, it's just, it's so simple, it's so logical, and I can't get my head around actually doing this over the board against a guy like Andraken, who is 2700 plus, who has won the Russian championship, who is such a strong player, and he just makes it look like getting like an advantage like this. He just makes it look so easy. Yeah. So that it's so good. It's it is so good. And throughout this game. What puzzles me even more is that he keeps on trading down material. Yeah. Which is, if you have a positional advantage, you don't want to trade down the material. Because then it ends up in an end game yeah. where the material advantage is going to be but even more But if there's clear. something that Kramnik likes, it's, it's, an, uh, it's an end game where he has some positional advantage that only he fully understands and that he really shows how he outclasses his opponent in this one because he understands this material imbalance I would be quite happy to be black here if I was playing you quite happy to be black I oh, have a nice you're queen better than me at yeah. chess so yeah. like yeah but yeah. I would have a nice queen a nice little rook and I would have to, you know, find a place for this, but I would feel my like queen king was yeah, nice. Yeah, some double pawns over there, yeah. in theory, maybe exposed. Yeah. But, uh, but Kremnik figured it all out and thought, yeah, this, this pawn is simply winning. It's simply winning. Because you cannot stop it. 
it will become a queen if you're not uh, if you're not willing to sacrifice even more position. So uh, it's a dual purpose move, of course. Yeah, it, uh, it threatens the knight and it uh, and it defends the uh, very very important pass pawn. So the uh, knight has to go somewhere, and fortunately for uh, Indraken, it has a, a very uh, interesting place to go. It'll go to uh, e5, so that it will uh, both get out of the attack. Slash, it will be defended by the queen, and also it will attack the uh, pawn, the vital pass pawn. Yeah, and uh, some, 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 sometimes just a one move uh, threat will be uh, countered with a one move defense. It's very simple chess. You know, he attacks the pawn, Kramnik defends the pawn. He makes it look so easy sometimes. So uh, at this point. Uh, and Drekin, I think I think that he has a hard time finding out what he wants to do. So he wants to improve this knight because it's sort of flying out there. So perhaps he would like to have it on this square on uh, on f6. So he he takes a little d2 and puts the knight to g4, uh, so that it's possible to. I mean, I saw it and I just I thought it was kind of like a desperate last try to get an attack going, but it's not. An Kidding. Yeah, I, it's not, that's not an attacking move. It, it you know, it passes like us maybe playing, maybe like dish, yeah, dish playing some for some double like, yeah. attack, whatever. Yeah, but, but against a guy like Kremnik, you know, that's yeah, that's I forget know. it. That's not now. Yeah, he will, and Dragon wants to re reposition the knight uh, to get it to a more to a place where it can eat more easily defend. So, but this allows, of course, Kremnik to uh, get his knight uh, back into play. He puts it on uh, d3, which is a very sensible square. He wants it uh, on, on uh, b4, for instance, so that it can uh, provide even more protection for the pan. Or pan there, same yeah. result. Yeah. yeah. Well, right now that square is double attack, so why yeah. would he? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now uh, uh, we have reached the the phase of the game where it's it's just a matter of technique and when it, when it comes to technique before Carlsen it was Kramnik was the undisputed champion now in the end game I think perhaps Carlsen is even more precise than Kramnik perhaps but Kramnik is damn precise and Draken he is uh, he's pretty good as well and, and he uh, he tries he tries with the, to improve his king here. So he goes uh, g7 with the king uh, to uh, slightly improve the king to get it uh, more close to the center when the uh, real end game approaches because he sees that this queen will have to go at some point or it will have to there will have to be either the queen will go for the rooks or the uh, the, uh, the the minor pieces will have to go at some point, and then we'll have. This is damage game. control. It's damage control. That's okay. what it is. Yeah. So um, uh, at this point, let's see what would I do if I was like. Yeah, of course. Uh, if I was cramming, of course, I would uh, play uh, bishop two f three. <laughs> wish. Yeah. That is what cramming did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's he. Playing the simple chess here. He's attacking the knight, say, and then defending the bishop. Now the bishop is really locked here. It has a nice pawn to defend it, and the uh, the knight goes just back, and and now it's defended by the king on, on f6, and he's uh, consolidating his advantage, saying, you know, I don't need any more fancy stuff. I played one fancy trick, sacrificing the queen. Now I have the passed pawn, and you have nothing. You have nothing. I completely see that Dimitri is on the defense here, but yeah. still the material. I'm just, you know, I mean, you know. Yeah, I'm but you know, confused, you know, yeah. The the idea that a queen is worth so and so much and rooks are worth so and so much. It only works to the extent that you also count the actual position. Because the relative power of these pieces, like this pawn for instance, we learned that the pawn is worth one point and the queen is worth perhaps ten or nine points. But this pawn is so much stronger than one point. It's a really strong point at some point, I guess uh, it's worth a piece. Yeah, because either it's gonna, you know, uh, upgrade to a queen or 
he will have to sack his material advantage to prevent that from happening. Which is actually the case. Let's see what point, happens. At this point, this knight uh, needs a home. So uh, Jimmy should prepare a very nice home for it in, uh, on f6. And uh, this gives uh, Kramig even more time to move his knight over to b4. Makes sense. Yeah. Now this pawn is even more protected. What to do? So, uh, Andrekin is struggling really in this position. He doesn't really have any good moves. He played h5 uh, and yeah, it's... It, it, no, what? What? No. No. What are you doing? Sorry. No, no, h5 with the pawn. And okay. uh, yeah, sure. uh, yeah, move like that. It really, it doesn't really do anything. It you know, it catches a little more space, but it it really, to my eye, to my non grandmaster eyes, at least, it doesn't really do, do do that. Well, I've already established myself as an amateur, as mm -hmm. I assumed it was another move, but um. I'm a big fan of the king attack whenever I get desperate. He makes a little room for the king. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. are you thinking about Bay Herbs? Oh, no, 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 it's not. Yeah, it's not going to work. I don't see it's not going to work. But yeah. So at this point, um, Kramnik simply, do simply doubles the rooks, saying, I now have all my pieces defending this pawn. Exactly what are you going to do? Now, this guy, the king, this motherfucker right here, the boss. Yeah, he's the boss. And had he been here, then uh, this whole thing mm -hmm. would have been uh, totally different. But since he's on uh, G1 and has these nice pawns and this nice bishop defending him, there's absolutely no way for this crazy queen to get inside the structure. And as long as that's the case, then the Attacking power of the king, queen, keen. She's keen to be a queen to attack. Word. Nah, but the point is that the attacking power of the queen is relative to the king's safety or the uh, uh, looseness, so to say, of the pieces. I'm so drunk. Are you drunk? I'm drunk. I'm very drunk. Yeah. Cheers. Being Cheers. Making movies, having fun. And walking around the world. Cheers. Cheers. A Knight rage to D five. Threatening the queen. Yes. Forcing the exchange of more minor pieces, which is exactly what Kramnik wants in this position. A simple, non-threatening endgame in which he can hone his advantage. He plays queen to D8. Yeah, because he's now allowing the pawn to advance. But there's two reasons for this. First of all, he cannot have his queen, his most uh, valuable piece, make, um, well, not counting the king, his most valuable piece, just having the role of blocking, blocking a pawn. That's yeah. simply not good enough. So, you know, he would really love to be able to play rook c7, so that, that would be so great for him. But of course, uh, in this position, Kramnik simply plays uh, uh, C7, and, and this really forces the issue. The rook uh, takes the pawn, and uh, and that was what we talked about. Either you allow him to get a queen, yeah, or you're now down on material, yeah, which was the only hope you had before. Yeah, so uh, it's over. It, there, he's 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 getting mm. uh, he's getting uh, some interest for his pawn. So the uh, queen catches uh, the bishop. And from this point, you know, if it if it was just you and me, it would be a game, you know. If I would have the I'd backside, the fight. yeah. Uh, but against the player of Kramnik's caliber, these two rooks, combined with the supreme safety of the king, is actually more than enough to win. And, and if you consider points, because now there's not past pawns anymore, yeah. right? Queen nine points, yeah. two rooks ten points. Yeah, that's a small difference. Yeah, even and you can't count the uh, double pawns. The double pawns, but it's enough. So that's Kramnik's style, like Carlson, like Capablanca, like Karpov, like these guys, the positional players. That's how they play. That's how they do. They they find some small thing, 
some small thing and then they just hone it and improve the position slowly until they have something like this which is a technical win for them and Draken knew that he was lost at this point Kremlin knew that he was should he, uh, should he have resigned? not in a situation like this, no uh, not so interesting, we see this tendency, I think it was actually him who played Carlson <laughs> recently yeah. where they played to the very bitter freaking end uh, even in an end game are you talking about Kremlin going uh, no, 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 uh, my beautiful other young Russian friend oh, yeah. played Magnus, where they actually played to the end. Yeah. There was a lost position, but they played to checkmate. And a lot of people were like, why didn't they resign? Yeah. But some talked about that there's a new tendency of these young players who was like, let's play. And like, for me, like, he could have resigned here, but it's just realistic. If mm. I was a spectator, I would be going like, what the fuck? play. Mm. Uh, in other positions, it's much more complex, we but they see seven moves ahead. Yeah. I don't. I sometimes wish that they would play it to the end. Yeah, That is the case of this game, not all the way to the end. But I like that tendency. I, I These see... young, eager players, they just want to play chess. Yeah. Like, let's not stop here, even if I lost. I know it's a gentleman's <laughs> game, and I it's considered gentleman-like to resign. But I agree. Do you think you know, Fisher had Fisher had the tendency, as they say, to play out, play to the Bear Kings, and you see how Carlson, you know, everybody says that's a draw, that's a drawn end game, don't no need to play anymore, and he plays on and he plays on, and forty moves later somehow he's winning, <laughs> and then twenty moves later that's a win. But also with these young kids, like that's what they gotta do. They actually gotta play on their stamina. Yeah. Like their their yeah. physique, yeah, physique, yeah. because. Uh, but Kramnik he's an old guy in chess terms. Like he's thirty eight. Yeah, but so still, if he could prolong this with like random. But you know, his, he he has a, he has tremendous stamina. You know, I I saw him at the candidates tournament, and he showed up to the ball with a complete tea set, so he could brew his tea while he was playing, just to say to the other guy, yeah, I'm going to be here for a good seven hours, <laughs> so I'm just going to make some tea, would you, ah. and, and he just ground people, and he, and he played tremendous chess at the candidates tournament. If you haven't seen it, I really can recommend looking at uh, Kramnik's games at the uh, candidates tournament. He was so unbelievably close at winning, but Carlson yeah, won Let's not end. talk about whether or not that was deserved, because we're all Magnus fans. So yeah, but that, should was, be there, but that was close. That was so close, that was unbelievable. That was but such a game nice like this, uh, a game like this, it just proves that, you know, mm. That Magnus is unfortunately not uh, immortal. Yet. He's not. No. And but he's that, 22 years old. I know, I know. I'm just saying that Kramnik, you know, he got game. Yeah, he does. Still. He does. He does. Yeah, he can. He can fight for the title still. We see a uh, queen sacrifice that ends up giving a positional advantage that eventually wins the game. Wins the freaking game, and you know, that's just straight up impressive. I never do queen sacks. I play you, my mentor, once in a while. If I feel cocky, I'll do it just for fun. We do some tournaments in public places, bars and parks and such, and I play conservative. I play for the points. I would never, in all seriousness, do this. And no, not make a queen sacrifice in, you know, in an official game. Yeah. No. It, uh, yeah, playing drunk or something, yeah, I will do Queen Sacrifice, yeah, I'll do this and be like, well, I'll totally make him now. Uh, and we try to play but this scene. guy, this guy, he's ice cold. He just, he walks in, there's a place, it's a 96000 $96, dollar match. Yeah. He walks in, he just does a Queen Sacrifice like it's nothing, he just wins the game with perfect technique and uh, with a stone cold face, then he draws the next three games like it's nothing. I mean, we try to make chess sexy, but we can't play this sexy. Nah, he really plays kidding. some sexy chess. You know, I have to give him that. What can we do? Can we ever reach this level? Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. I don't think so. But the point might be, you should never stop exploring. Yeah. Never stop exploring. Yeah. You can do some stuff. Yeah. You can study the games like we do. Study the games of the masters. 
you can study some videos on YouTube, for instance, my homie King's Crusher. Uh, backyard Professor. The Backyard my Professor. My favorite. Yeah. Check that guy out. Uh, that, that, guy, that guy is also, also Backyard Professor. If you are watching, our challenge is still standing for a, <laughs> for a online chess match with a dual commentary. We would so love to do that. Also, I have to give a shout out to Chess Explained, my Schnu, Jerry the Chess Network. All of you guys keeping the community alive. You are so awesome. Uh, I think uh, I think all you have to say now is that uh, if you like this uh, sort of rock and roll attitude towards chess, you should join at uh, join us at uh, fucking Skak, aka fucking chess. The link will be in the description. We are on Facebook, and uh, I'll see and you. like see you. at the very best, we can maybe inspire you. Yeah, to so explore more. It's formal, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So, cheers. Fucking cheers. Fucking cheers. <laughs> that was quite a handful.